In the previous demonstration, I walked through the event lifecycle and showed how you can tie into key events such as loaded or on main window activated. We also talked about the process all function, how important it is in that event lifecycle so that WinJS controls get loaded and rendered on a screen. Well, we're going to continue the theme of events in this demonstration, and I'm going to talk about two main types of event activities. First, we're going to talk about how can I handle events for HTML controls, and then we'll talk about how can I handle events for WinJS controls. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I have a fragment loaded, homepage.html, and it would be loaded into the shell, default.html, at runtime. And this has some controls that were covered in the control section demo earlier in this module. And I'm going to change things out a little bit though. Right now I have a toggle control and you know that's only a yes or no for a city. I want a little more info. So we're going to change that to a rating control. And then we're going to give it an ID as well. So let's give it an ID of just rating control. Okay, so now we have that control available. Now let's go into the homepage JS. And all this code was added for me. This is something that Visual Studio added based on the template I selected. And you can see that when the fragment appended event fires, fragment load will be called because we handle that event here. And then this is where I call process all. So you can see that this fragment code that was added for me automatically takes care of ensuring that WinJS controls are rendered. So I'm just going to make a call to loaded, which I'm going to add. And loaded is just going to have a little bit of code in it to uh, handle some basics. All right, so what I'm going to do is add a couple variables up here that match up. We're going to add a rating span, a city text box, and then we're going to need a rating control. And so you can see that when I call loaded, I grab the span, I grab the text box, and I grab the button. So the span. It's a little bit important because as they rate a particular item, I'd like to change this from not rated to whatever star they clicked on. And there's going to be, by default, there'll be five stars. So we'll give uh, the user an opportunity to see what they did live. So we're going to handle the change event of the rating control to make that possible. I also want to make it when they click on this button that we can pop up a dialog, a message dialog, to show them that we appreciate, thanks for the rating. Go ahead and do another one if you'd like. Okay, so in here, what I need to do is get the rating control. Now, I can't just say document get element by ID rating control because that would just give me the DOM element. So what you do is you say winjs and you have to say ui.getControl. Then you pass it the DOM object that you find through get element by ID. That's the process you'll always go through when you want to find WinJS controls that have been loaded up into the DOM. Now that I have a reference to the actual WinJS control, I can tie into properties, methods, and events. And in this case, we're going to add an event listener for the change. And I'm going to have that call a callback called change. And then we also, for the button, want to add an event listener for the click, and I'm going to have that call submit. All right, so some of this code I already have in a demo here. So for instance, submit, little segment of code. And this is something that was covered in a previous demonstration in this module, which is why I'm not going to type it again. But we're just going to pop up a message dialog. It has a single command in the dialog that when it's clicked, we'll call this function which in turn calls a clear. So let me show you the clear. It's also very simple. And all it's going to do is once they do that, we'll clear out what they did in the form, including the user rating. And that's a property of that rating control. We'll set that to zero, and then they can enter another rating if they'd like. So the last thing to do is the change. So we need to be able to handle that. So let's come in and make a change event callback. This will give us an event info object here. I'm not going to use it in this example, but you could. And all we're going to do here is update that rating span I showed. We want to update the inner HTML to the city text box value, plus a little text that says, you know, Chandler rating, and then give it the value they rated. And then here we're going to uh, go in and we need to get to the rating control because we know it now changed. And I'm going to get to the user rating. 
Okay, so that'll take care of automatically handling the WinJS rating controls change event. That fires, and then we simply update the span as that fires. And then, of course, we did just a regular, a simple HTML object event handler. Click, goes to submit, and that's going to pop up a dialog. So now we should be all ready to go. So let's go ahead and run it. And as this loads, I'll enter a city. We'll go ahead and rate it. I live in Chandler and like it, so we'll give it a five star rating. You can see Chandler rating is five. And then when I hit submit, we get a dialog that says thanks for adding the rating. You hit continue, and then it should clear out the form up here, and you can see it does. So that's an example of how you can work with events whether it's regular HTML objects or WinJS controls.